Fear of the end is woven into the fabric of our history. Ancient civilizations watched the skies for vengeful gods, medieval prophets foretold plagues and famines, and today we face the looming specters of climate collapse and nuclear war. The question is, are we simply destined to forever tremble in the shadow of destruction, or is there power to be found in understanding these apocalyptic anxieties? We'll journey through a history of doomsday prophecies, examining the science and the superstitions behind them. But fear not, this isn't merely an exercise in terror. We're going to arm you with the knowledge and practical skills of a survivalist. Because whether you're facing a global crisis or life's smaller disasters, preparedness is your greatest weapon. The sky is falling and the world is ending. We've heard it all before, but this time it might just be true. Why? Because Baba Vanga said it. And considering that she accurately predicted the 2022 droughts and floods, the Twin Tower disaster, the Kirsch disaster, Barack Obama, Donald Trump and the death of Idra Gandhi and her own death, I'm inclined to believe her. Right before she died, she made the prediction that the world would come to an end in the year 5079. Of course, this comes after the resolution of the world hunger crisis in 2025, something to immediately look forward to, and organ transplants that extend the average lifespan to at least 100 years old in the year 2046. Oh, and of course, communism's return in 2006. 76. But it appears that even with time travel becoming a thing in the year 2304, the world's end is set in stone for the sixth millennia. Baba Vanga also predicted that things would be getting pretty bad for Europe starting in 2024, mostly due to rises in terror attacks, leading to a change of power in Europe and eventually leading to many Europeans being displaced. I remember first bringing this up in a video months back, and it's actually kind of eerie talking about it now with the recent incidents in Moscow. Is it just a complete coincidence or could it be connected? Share your thoughts down below as always. It is kind of creepy though that Baba Vanga even predicted there would be an attempt on the president of Russia's life in 2024, which is of course Vladimir Putin. Apparently the attacker will be someone from Russia though. Now this is yet to be seen, but if that does happen, I, uh, I might start second guessing how I feel about this whole Baba Vanga having seen into the future thing. Speaking of those attacks, James, Baba Vanga has predicted that many of them will actually end up utilizing biological weaponry, which is completely terrifying because biological weapons are generally airborne, meaning that you don't need to be caught in any kind of direct line of attack to be infected by them. All you really have to do is breathe in. Have you ever heard of anthrax, botulism, smallpox, the plague? Well, each and every one of those have been used as biological weapons in the past. And while the symptoms have varied, the results have remained the same. Mass death, caused by either poisoning or the rapid spread of disease. I really hope Ababa got this one wrong, uh, and most things on the list wrong, because I really don't feel like being scared of leaving my house again due to fear of death by inhalation. All right, so these last couple points definitely play into her predictions of political upheaval said to soon start taking place. One of Baba Vanga's famous prophecies told of a quote, strong dragon that will seize humanity. What is this dragon exactly? Well, many have interpreted this to mean China, that the nation's power will continue to strengthen on a global level, completely changing the power dynamics of the world. And will things go smoothly? I mean, probably not. The idea here is that there will be another world war before the dust settles and power has changed hands. And I don't know, I think this could easily just be paranoid fear mongering, but it's not like war never happens either. So uh, hold on to your butts. I guess. Let's look on the bright side. An uprising of terror, biological weapons deployment, political upheaval, which obviously results in the inevitable economic crash. Did I say bright side? I meant to say we're screwed. As if the economy wasn't already far gone enough, Baba has predicted that things will only get worse as the year progresses onwards. Rising debts, mass inflation, heightened mortgages, and an increase in poverty are apparently all safe bets for our 2024 bingo cards. Which makes sense, and I honestly don't actually think we needed Baba for this one. I mean, come on, there's like five major wars already going on, and a crap ton of international conflict and tension. I'm I'm actually scared though about how this year is going to progress. I mean, we could be looking at lost access to credit, shutdown of banks, and demand for goods far outweighing our supply. I know this is extremist, but 
you know, that's what you're here for. <laughs> and for those of you feeling really good about recently securing some appreciating investments, you'll probably be waiting just a bit longer than you expected on those returns, if they even come at all, that is. Baba Vanga also predicted first contact with aliens very soon, possibly even in 2024. Now, and I know many claim that aliens already are among us. I can't say for certain, I've never seen an alien, but the prediction is really referring to alien contact being a globally recognized thing, like undeniable. Now, will this be good or bad? That remains to be seen, but we're definitely seeing an increase in UFO sightings and acknowledgments from the government that unidentified flying objects are a thing, so this one actually seems kind of likely. I, for one, very much hope that first contact with aliens happens. I'd really like having the option of just talking and conversing with something that isn't human for once that can actually talk back. I mean, you, you talk to your pets all the time, right? Unless, of course, uh, aliens turn out to be ill-intentioned, but, you know, plenty of ill-intentioned humans out there as well. I think if aliens did turn up, we'd be far too distracted dealing with them to be raging war on each other. It might still lead to the destruction of the entire human race if the aliens decided to attack, but at least we wouldn't be attacking each other for once, and that would be kind of nice. Okay guys, uh, this list has been kind of depressing so far. I mean, aliens are pretty cool, but uh, yeah, uh, what are the points literally outline the possibility of falling into a great depression? But not all of Baba Vanga's predictions are bad. In fact, this one's pretty good. A cure for both cancer and Alzheimer's disease has been predicted by Baba Vaca. I'm really hoping this one is true and that most of the other ones aren't because this would be an amazing medical advancement that in my opinion really should have and could have and probably did come sooner, but the pharmaceutical industry is kind of greedy. So with that being said, these treatments will most likely be incredibly expensive, but I'm trying to stay positive. Earlier this year, the Russian government put out a statement saying, we have come very close to the creation of so-called cancer vaccines and immunomodulatory medicines of a new generation. And they added, I hope that they will be effectively used as methods of individual therapy. This is great news, but at the same time, considering the ongoing conflict, I wouldn't be holding my breath anytime too soon. Next we have Baba Vanga's Mars prophecy. So will the stuff we've listed so far wipe us out completely? Well the 5079 thing seems like the real end, but most of the other stuff might just put us on the brink of destruction because further into the future, we may form a colony on Mars. This colony will grow to such power though, that it may become a superpower of its own, demanding independence from Earth, leading to a conflict that will rage between 2170 to 2256. A very oddly specific prophecy, one that me and you will likely never actually get to see play out unless human life expectancy drastically improves over the coming decades. A cancer vaccine might help with that. I certainly hope humans will have gotten beyond petty squabbling by the time we've started building colonies on other planets though, but unfortunately, I don't know, I wouldn't put it past us. Cyber attacks are nothing new, but they might be getting a whole new meaning if Baba Vanga's prediction for an uprising in cyber criminality is true. Baba said that in 2024, not only would we be seeing an increase in common cyber attacks, such as phishing scams, ransomware, malware, and information stealing, but also an increase in some much more serious offenses as well. Baba predicted that the targets of these cyber attacks are going to get a lot more communal, with attackers going after communities and nations rather than the individual. She believes that the main targets will be power grids and water treatment plants, which of course lines up with all of the other predictions of chaos and terror as these attacks would substantially increase threats to national security. Honestly, I feel like there's just no winning these days, unless of course you find yourself a plot of land in the middle of nowhere next to a source of fresh water, obviously. Oh, and get yourself equipped with an in-house distillation and irrigation system and solar panels and you have to have a farm full of animals and crops to feed the animals and a whole bunch of other survival stuff. Am I saying we're screwed? Well, I'm not saying we're not. And we're gonna finish off the list with a, a terrible global disease, the joy. Yeah, this would be my least 
favorite way for the world to end. At least with aliens and like war, you can see your attackers. Disease uh, is so much more insidious. You can't actually see it coming. You can't fight it. Apparently, sometime this year, according to Baba Vanga, anyway, Donald Trump is going to contract a terrible illness that will cause him brain trauma and deafness. Whether or not this is referring to the same illness that will sweep its way across the globe remains to be seen. All I do know is that if Trump starts complaining about not being able to hear Sleepy Joe, I'm just gathering up a bunch of canned food, I'm driving as far away as I can, and I'm digging an underground bunker to protect myself from this disease, whatever biological weapons are going to unleash themselves on the planet, whatever alien species is coming to crash the party, or whatever powerful dragon country is going to swoop across the earth to take it all over. At number 10 is the earthquake in Japan on New Year's Day. Mere hours into the new year, Nostradamus's first prophecy for 2024 came true. His prediction for 2024 begins with the oracle writing, quote, the dry earth will become more parched and there will be a great flood. Now we'll address the first part of that prophecy in just a moment because the psychic's followers have surmised that Nostradamus was referring to the 7.5 magnitude tremor that hit Japan's western coast mere hours into the new year, which claimed 48 lives and leveled buildings and in the process generating tsunamis. These waves engulfed the coast and swept homes and cars into the sea, forcing residents to seek higher ground. So not only did his prediction for great floods in 2024 come true in immediately, but the oracle also managed to sneak in a long-term prediction in the same sentence. You see, most have speculated that his dry earth hypothesis is definitely in reference to the climate crisis we find ourselves in. 2023 was the hottest year in recent human history, and experts hypothesize that 2024 is going to be even hotter, with even more droughts and fires than last year. We're only one entry in, and the dude's already got two predictions right, so let's see what else 2024 has in store for us, according to Nostradamus. At number 9 is World War. War 3. One of his predictions talks about a new world war starting 79 years after World War 2. Now people are trying to connect the dots between what Nostradamus said and the current and very tense situations across the globe. Take Ukraine for example with all that back and forth conflict there. Then there's the whole tension between China and Taiwan plus the ongoing struggles in Palestine. At this point it's very possible that any one of these wars could escalate into something much worse on a scale that we haven't seen in nearly 80 years. And as for whether or not this will come into fruition, we're just gonna have to wait and see. If you're enjoying the video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. And number 8, Famine and the Pandemic. Nostradamus's prediction about a quote, very great famine through pestiferous wave, end quote, sure sparks curiosity to say the least. Now first off, how might this famine happen? Well think about it, a pestiferous wave, if I'm pronouncing that right, might not just mean a disease, but it could also mean like a swarm of pests attacking crops or disrupting food supplies. Climate change could also play a part, causing extreme weather that messes up farming, leading to food shortages. Imagine a situation in which crops fail due to devastating pet infestation or changing climate patterns. Now this could hit hard as food prices skyrocket and some places could struggle to get enough to eat. The effects might ripple worldwide, causing instability, conflicts over resources, and economic chaos. Now remember, these predictions are like reading tea leaves, which is open to many interpretations, so while it's good to be aware, let's take these problems prophecies with a pinch of skepticism. At number 7, Prince Harry becomes king. One of his prophecies is making people do a double take lately, especially those eyeing the British monarchy. So there's this passage in his book hinting at the quote, hinting at a king of the isles facing a forced exit. Now many people are drawing a line between that prediction and King Charles III. See if Nostradamus wasn't cooking up poetic riddles, it seems like there's trouble brewing for the new ruler. Now while some have taken that to signify the torch being passed from the late Queen Elizabeth to the now King Charles, that wouldn't explain the whole driven out by force bit. So some are speculating that King Charles is to be dethroned, but by who exactly? Well the prophecy throws in a twist saying that this ruler would be usurped by quote, one who will have no mark of a king. So basically a new leader that won't have the usual kingly vibes or isn't inherently the heir to the throne. Now, Prince William is next in line for the crown, but according to Nostradamus, that might not stick. Cue Prince Harry, the spare in the royal deck, potentially becoming the king. This actually goes down, it's gonna be like a plot straight out of a Netflix series. Brace yourself.
yourselves for a royal roller coaster, because the drama is far from over. Item number six, the celestial fire on the royal edifice. Many people all over the internet are corroborating this with the line about the dethroned king, speculating that the reign of the British Empire under the new king's rule will all go up in flames. But this passage might not necessarily be about the British royals, despite everybody jumping to that conclusion. Some folks mean it could be any non-democratic power structure, or even just a metaphorical fire, not an actual blaze at Buckingham Palace or anything. Now people are getting super hyped saying that this is the end of the world, but honestly, it's taking a lot of guesswork here. Who knows what Nostradamus is really talking about? It's like reading an old text message without emojis. Or any context leaving it totally open to interpretation. At number five is the death of Pope Francis. So Nostradamus had some very spooky predictions about 2024, and one of them involves the Pope. He talked about a very old Pope shuffling off this moral coil, and then a seasoned Roman taking over. Now that's got people thinking, especially because Pope Francis, who is about to turn 87, hasn't been feeling too chipper lately. I mean, the guy had to skip a major climate conference due to his lung issues. Now the thing with Nostradamus is that his predictions are like deciphering riddles, so there's always room for interpretation. It's not like a crystal ball that gives you a clear picture. But still, when it comes to talking about the Pope and his health, it really makes you take notice. Now let's not hit the panic button just yet. Maybe Nostradamus was having an off day or reading the stars upside down. So here's to hoping that Pope Francis sticks around for a good while and proves those predictions wrong. After all, a bit of good health practices and a sprinkle of optimism might just dodge these gloomy forecasts. At number four is the Pope's replacement. So the passage for this one reads, through the death of the very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Now we've already dissected the first bit, how our good and old Pope Francis is going to kick the bucket this year, but Nostradamus throws in a curveball. He says this new and fresh Pope will, quote, weaken his see. Now, what does this really mean? Some think that this new Pope is going to be shaking things up in the church, maybe bringing new ideas or changing the rules. Now, the prophet of doom probably would have seen this as a bad thing, but in this new day and age, maybe it's not all doom and gloom. Perhaps that's his way of saying that this new Pope will be someone who introduces new and progressive changes and introduces the church to rules to fit neater in the present age. Now, if you were a fundamentalist or biblical literalist, that might sound like dreadful news, but for the rest of us, it eh, doesn't sound too bad. It's like getting a religious software update. At number three, the naval war against China. Nostradamus predicted a combat and naval battle and said that, quote, a red adversary will become pale with fear, putting the great ocean in dread. Super cryptic. So if this one comes true, then the world is gonna end this year, no doubt. Like, we're all in for nuclear Armageddon, so let's hope it was wrong about this one, yeah? This prediction talks about a big war involving what people assume to be China. He said something about battles, especially naval ones, and how a red adversary would get scared and make the ocean all nervous. Now, lots of folks have different ideas about what this passage means. Some say it's about China getting into a huge fight with other countries, potentially when they try to reclaim Taiwan for its resources, though that would inevitably drag in the West as well. World War III, anyone? Now, this passage is still super vague. Others just think it's old words being twisted to fit what's happening now. At number two, is the Antichrist. This prediction is by far one of the most way out there predictions in the whole book, and if it's correct, in the biblical Armageddon is literally going to happen this year. The passage goes like this, quote, The Antichrist very soon annihilates the three. 27 years his war will last. The unbelievers are dead, captive, and exiled, with blood, human bodies, water, and red hail covering the earth, end quote. Now this could mean that this year marks the beginning of the end, but here's the thing. Nostradamus is kind of like the Da Vinci Code of his time. His writings are super open to interpretation. Like the line about the Antichrist very soon annihilates the three. Some people think that the three could be the three big powers, maybe the Holy Trinity, thus signifying the end of organized religion or something along those lines. Or maybe it's something else entirely. And who knows? That bit about blood, bodies, water, and red hail covering the earth? Yeah. Sounds like either the dude's been reading the Apocalypse of John before bed every night, or maybe he needs a cup of something to steady his nerves. For all we know, this could be a cryptic message of some sort, like trying to solve a riddle without the answer key. Now, people are freaking out about these predictions. Some might even try to connect events to what Nostradamus said, like a cosmic detective, but the predictions here are as clear as mud. So instead of sweating the maybes, let's just keep our cool and see how things play out. And at number one are his most vague predictions. What's spooky about Nostradamus' predictions is their 
utter vagueness. Take this line for example. The sloping park, great commodity, through the lands of the west and Lombardy. The fire in the ship, plague and captivity. Mercury and Sagittarius, Saturn fading. What the heck? It sounds like a cryptic horoscope. There's a reference to a park, a fire, a disease, some planets. Could it mean a fire in a theme park while Saturn's rings disappear? Or maybe a metaphorical firestorm in the western world due to political conflicts? People have been trying to interpret these passages for centuries, finding connections to major events after after the fact, but taking them as solid predictions for the end of the world is a different story. Predictions are intriguing, but until the celestial fire comes knocking, it's a guessing game and an eerie puzzle. First up, we have Baba Vanga's prediction of Aumuamua, an asteroid being sent to Earth by forces that are beyond our world. Baba Vanga made the prediction before her death on August 11th of 1996, which is insane considering the fact that Aumuamua wasn't discovered until October 19th of 2017. Aumuamua is the first interstellar object to be detected detected passing through our solar system, interstellar, meaning that it originated in a solar system other than our own. It is debated whether or not the object is an asteroid or a meteor, but what is clear to scientists is that this foreign object is huge, 400 meters long, and getting closer to Earth each and every day. Baba Vanga predicts that one day the object will collide with Earth, but not only that. She believes that it was sent by aliens to assess human cells on Earth, which is quite fitting when you take into consideration the English translation of Al Muamua, which means a messenger from afar arriving first. Could this asteroid possibly be the foreshadowing of alien life arriving on our planet? Let me know what you think down below. Next up, we have Baba Vanga's prediction of a lot of major earthquakes happening in 2024, with some taking place in places they generally wouldn't occur. Sound familiar? Just four days ago, on Friday, April, fifth, New York was hit by a massive earthquake that had a magnitude of 4.8 and caused the Statue of Liberty to shake profusely. It lasted about 30 seconds and local resident Charita Walcock described the feeling as being like in the center of a drum circle. The last time New York was hit by a large earthquake was in 2011 with a much higher magnitude, albeit, of 5.8. What's really strange though is that generally earthquakes occur where two tectonic plates meet, so how the hell did one occur smack dab in the middle of a tectonic plate in New York. I'm not a scientist, so I really have no clue. But what I do know is that Baba Vanga's prediction is looking a lot scarier when you take that fact into perspective. Not only that, but this year alone, just three months and a few days in, we've already seen 143 6.0 to 6.9 magnitude earthquakes, 1,580 5.0 to 5.9, and 15,817 4.0 zero to four point nine earthquakes and the earth is cracking so not overly promising for the future if you ask me next up we have Baba Vanga's prediction of Earth's orbit changing, which will lead us to an increase in global climate change and extreme glacial defrosting. This is both new and not new. Why? Well, because we have known for a long time that over time, the Earth's orbit does slowly change due to gravitational pulls in the atmosphere that cause the orbit to become either more circular or elliptical, which is basically just a fancy word for oval because the word ovular was already taken. Anyways, the existence of changes within Earth's orbit was discovered in 1989 by scientific expert Jacques Lascar after Baba Vanga had made her initial prediction. Fast forward to 2024, while the Earth's orbit has barely changed, it has changed. And we are experiencing glacial defrosting at a rate that has never been observed before, which is pretty nerve wracking, especially when you consider this next point. Baba Vanga predicted the discovery of a frozen virus in Siberia in 2022 that would eventually lead to another global pandemic. In 2022, a group of French scientists discovered, studied, and revived an ancient virus known as the zombie virus that they found buried in a frozen lake in Russia. The virus was discovered as a result of, guessed it, melting ice in the Antarctic region. And after tens of thousands of years, 
years of the ancient virus lying dormant, scientists thought it would be a good idea to revive it. Really? Lucky for us, this particular virus only attacks single celled organisms, but who's to say the next one they find and decide to carelessly reanimate won't lead to the destruction of life as we know it. Say it with me, we do not reanimate things that could kill us. We don't. Well, according to Baba Vanga, did predict that sometime in 2024, Putin's reign over Russia would end after meeting his death at the hands of someone close to him, perhaps someone working on one of his political or military teams. According to Vladimir Putin himself, at this point in time he has already survived six separate assassination attempts on his life since 2002. While that may very well be the case, according to Baba Vanga, it is unlikely that he will survive many more. Moving a bit further into the future, we have the prediction that 23 years after Europe becomes Islamic in 2043, the United States of America will reach a major milestone in weapons technology. In 2066, the US will create a weapon called the Environmental Destructor that will freeze everything in its path. Whether or not this means that the United States will have created technology that allows them to act like Frozone from The Incredibles, literally causing everything in its path to turn to ice, or if the weapon simply just destroys areas causing their ability to support life to become frozen in time remains to be seen. Personally, I don't like the sound of either, and again, like most predictions on this list, I really hope she got this one wrong. But this one, however, I really hope she got right, as Baba Vanga has predicted that world hunger will be over by the year 2025, so that's coming up real soon. How? I have no clue whatsoever, but in an incredibly unstable world with an incredibly unstable future, it's nice to hear this kind of thing coming out of the mouth of a woman who has in the past predicted the future with over 80% accuracy. While world hunger has gone down significantly since the 1980s, we still have a long way to go in solving the issue worldwide. Increased agricultural productivity and the promotion of sustainable food systems will most likely be integral components in reaching this goal, but if we want it done by 2025, like Baba Vanga predicts, we've better act fast. Okay, this next point is pretty positive too. By 2046, Baba Vanga has predicted that organ donations and organ transplant technologies will become so incredibly advanced that they will expand the average lifespan to more than 100 years, which means that in 2046 and onwards, centennials, people who live to or past 100 years of age, will become the rule rather than the exception. Considering the incredible advancements we have already made in medicine so far, paired with the prediction of a cure for cancer coming out in 2024, I'm incredibly hopeful. Cautious, but hopeful. Again, these treatments will probably cost upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars, so like I said, cautious, but hopeful. Next up, the return of communism, which Baba Vanga has predicted will take place in the year 2076. The arguments both for and against communism are plenty and constantly changing as the definition of communism changes to adapt advancements in technology, human rights policies, military medicine, etc. So honestly, it's hard to tell whether or not this return of communism will fall under any kind of modern day definition of communism or how it will play out in a world full of automated labor. So I guess all I have to say is that while Baba Vanga did predict the return of communism, we have no way of knowing what that will look like, I think. And finally, to finish off our list today, we have Baba Vanga's prediction of some pretty major solar activity that could have some pretty serious consequences for Earth. The prediction was set for 2023, and it came true in 2023. On December 15th of 2023, it was reported that a NASA telescope had captured the biggest solar flare the world has seen in years. A solar flare that was responsible for temporarily knocking out radio communications across the globe. The solar flare was accompanied by a massive radio burst that caused a full two hours of radio interference in the United States and other areas of the world facing the sun at the time of the solar flare. The event went down in history as being one of the largest solar radio events to ever be recorded. So again, it seems Baba Vanga got it right, which makes me very, very, very nervous. Alright, we're going to start things off with John Titor. This individual claimed to be a time traveler from the year 2036. So in 2000, post 
started showing up on various online forums by a man known as John Titer, sharing detailed accounts of his time travel experiences and predictions about the future. According to Titer, he was a soldier sent back in time to retrieve an IBM 5100 computer, which he claimed was necessary to debug various computer systems in his future. He provided technical details about the time machine he used, describing it as a stationary mass temporal displacement unit powered by two top spin dual positive singularities. Titer also claimed that he traveled back to the year 1975 before making a pit stop in the early 2000s, including in this series of posts were predictions about future events, including some ominous warnings about the impending collapse of society. Titer wrote that there be a World War III and claimed that it would result in widespread chaos, with cities becoming uninhabitable and governments collapsing. You know what? I appreciate how creative this guy is. Um, I, you know what? I, I, I'm actually very entertained by it. Good job on John Titer's part, even though that's most likely very much not his real name. All right, next up we have Edgar Casey, often referred to as the Sleeping Prophet. He was an American psychic who did most of his work in the early to mid 1900s. He was known for entering into this deep trance-like state while giving readings on a wide range of topics like health, spirituality, Atlantis for some reason came up a lot, and of course future events. Now he didn't explicitly discuss time travel, but he did describe his consciousness leaving his body, combining this with future prophecies, and that's basically traveling in time. Casey's predictions often revolved around a concept he referred to as the Earth changes. According to his readings, these changes were geological and environmental shifts that would happen in the future, leading to problems. Some of his predictions included the shifting of the Earth's axis, which would result in changes in climate and sea levels. He also spoke of societal and political catastrophe, saying the only way to avoid it was through spiritual awakening and moral development as a society to help mitigate the severity of these events. All right, we're following that up with a pretty incredible man. A man who's not only traveled through time, future, and past, but has also traveled through space, making multiple trips to and from Mars. Ladies and gentlemen of Most Amazing Top 10, please give a warm and enthusiastic round of claps to none other than Andrew Basiago. Basiago claims to have been a participant in a secretive government project involved in time travel as a young boy. It was called Project Pegasus, which he says was developed by the United States government in the 60s and 70s. According to him, the project involved teleportation and time travel experiments, and he claims to have been sent to various points in the past and future. One of Basiago's most sensational claims is that he was sent back in time to witness historical events, including the Gettysburg Address by Abraham Lincoln in 1863. He's also talked about how he traveled to the future and saw potential catastrophic events, including a vision of a devastated Washington, D.C. Basiago's accounts involve the use of a device called a chronovisor which I love, and a teleportation technology known as teleporters. He also describes these technologies as being capable of manipulating time and space, allowing folks to travel to different eras and locations instantaneously. So if you want to learn more about these time travel events, just ask Barack Obama, because apparently he was right there with Basiago for some of these time travel trips. Let's throw a witch into the mix, shall we? Mother Shipton. One tale goes that her mother, Agatha, was a witch herself and summoned the devil before her to bring her a child. And that child was Ursula Southill, aka Mother Shipton, who instead of crying like most babies when she was born, made an unsettling cackling sound because she was a half and half. Dad was a devil, mom was a witch. Bit of a nasty shock for everyone when they found out. She lived in the 16th century and her predictions, which were often in the form of rhyme, have been studied and analyzed for centuries. Her verses are filled with vivid imagery and poetic language. She prophesies technological advancements, political changes, and horrible natural disasters. She said to have predicted the invention of cars, submarines, and even airplanes. But she also made vague predictions about the end times. The original date was 1821, which obviously didn't come true, unless we're all just living in some matrix style computer simulation or something. So the end of the world date keeps being reassessed and bumped forward. Uh, don't 
worry though, guys. Things will all come crashing down eventually. Next up, we have Harold Camping, a former Christian radio evangelist. This guy used his mind to travel to the future so often, they just kept fumbling the dates of his doomsday predictions and had to keep reassessing and, again, bumping them up. Unfortunately though, everything just kept on being okay. First he said the world was gonna end in early September of 94. It didn't, but he was adamant that 94 was gonna be the year and reassessed and realized, oh wait, it's actually end of September, sorry. 29th, not the 6th. Then he bumped it up to October and so on. But you know what? I can't imagine being clairvoyant is very easy on the brain. It must be a bit confusing and overwhelming to the senses. Anyway, then he said Christ was going to return on May 21st of 2011, which was a good thing for him and his followers, but bad for everyone else, of course, as the pitiful non-believers were gonna be suffering an internal torment. It was a very exciting time, but sadly, May 21st passed on without any horrific suffering. Suffering, on a mass scale, anyway. I, mean, I guess somebody's suffering every day. So Harold Camping, being the incredible clairvoyant wizard that he was, said, well, a spiritual judgment, uh, uh, that happened on May 21st. We've all been assessed, uh, getting everyone's paperwork together, uh, but get excited, folks. October, that's when the physical rapture is gonna happen. And it didn't. And apparently Camping was clairvoyant enough to know it, too, because he quit working on the radio station just a few days before this apparent biblical apocalypse was set to take place. If there's two things that seem to go together like chocolate and peanut butter, it's time travel and space travel. And that's exactly why I have Heaven's Gate cult leader Marshall Applewhite on the list. This guy firmly believed the world was coming to an end and that the only way to survive was to ascend to a higher plane of existence by shedding the physical form and reaching the very creatively titled Next Level, where he and his followers would live a happy, transcended existence in space. Most of you know how this went, Applewhite and the rest of the Heaven's Gate cult donned their uniforms, complete with armbands reading Heaven's Gate Away Team, and consumed heavy amounts of a, a certain substance, washing it down with a vodka, before suffocating themselves with plastic bags over their head. I'm not really sure why they needed the uniforms, um, seeing as the whole point was they were shedding their physical forms, but who am I, right, you know? Rudolf Steiner, this guy was the founder of a spiritual movement called Anthroposophy. His teachings delved into the nature of existence, human consciousness, and the spiritual world in general. His philosophy often touched on the idea of spiritual evolution and the cyclical nature of existence. He often discussed reincarnation in his work, meaning that according to him, people go through multiple lifetimes to learn and evolve spiritually. So it may not be time travel, in a conventional sense, but it does imply a journey through time on a more spiritual level. He also spoke about the idea that humanity is on a path of development and our collective actions and choices play a big role in shaping the future and a major consequence of humanity not developing spiritually, again, according to him, meant that a very dark future was ahead. Next on the list is David Mead. This guy is a conspiracy theorist and author who's made a number of predictions about an impending apocalypse, mostly linking it to a planet called Nibiru or a planet X. Mead, who identifies as a Christian numerologist, claimed to have uncovered hidden codes within the Bible, using them to predict specific celestial events. His predictions have focused on the alignment of celestial bodies and certain numerical calculations that point to a catastrophic collision between Earth and Planet X. I remember hearing a lot about this doomsday prediction leading up to 2012. That was a big year for end of the world predictions. Once again, didn't pan out though. Next up we have David Icke. David Icke is a British conspiracy theorist known for promoting some pretty unconventional ideas. Uh, one of his most notorious claims involves the existence of shape-shifting reptilian human aliens who, according to him, secretly control the world. You've heard of this stuff before, especially if you watch this channel. Ike suggests that many prominent figures, world leaders, and celebrities for the most part are actually reptilians in disguise. The idea that powerful figures are actually reptilian aliens manipulating humanity has become a pretty well-known conspiracy theory at this point. 
And some people really believe it, like wholeheartedly. Ike has also made plenty of predictions about the end of the world, and as well as other, you know, global conspiracies. He's talked about how the global elite, working in collaboration with these supposed reptilian beings, are orchestrating events to control and manipulate the world, and of course, they don't have our best intentions in mind. I guess his publisher might have been one of these uh, reptilians, because at a certain point, um, apparently he was just like, no more of this. I can't publish any of these books anymore. So now he just self-publishes. He's, he's got like tons of books about this stuff. It's nuts. Finally though, we have Baba Vanga. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you've probably heard of this lady before. She's made all kinds of horrific predictions about the future, some of which were pretty eerily accurate. For those of you who aren't aware though, Baba Vanga was a Bulgarian mystic and clairvoyant, born in 1911 and died in 1996. She became famous for her apparent ability to make predictions about the future. And a good number of these predictions were pretty bad. Her predictions were wide-ranging, covering global events, natural disasters. One of her biggest apocalyptic predictions was that the world would end in the 51st century, but she didn't really give a lot of explicit detail about how that would occur, so good luck to us trying to avoid it. Similar to Nostradamus, her prophecies were usually a bit on the cryptic side, open to interpretation. And we're starting off the list with quantum computing. So unlike traditional computers, which use bits that are either zero or one, quantum computing uses quibits, which can represent any combination of both zero and one at the very same time. This means they can perform complex calculations much, much quicker than the computers we use right now. Baba Vanga predicted breakthroughs in this technology playing out in 2024. Now, quantum computing isn't uh, inherently bad, and it's definitely useful for solving complex problems, but there's a dangerous side to this type of technology. The major concern here is its potential ability to break encryption methods that we use day to day. Sensitive data could be leaked with far more ease than any hacker would be able to accomplish. Authentication systems that we have in place now could also become completely obsolete, leading to potential breaches and cyber attacks. More on cyber attacks later in the video, by the way. And at number nine, we have a global economic crisis. Baba Vanga made a prediction that in 2024, the world might face a massive uh, economic crash. This means a lot of money troubles, people losing jobs, businesses struggling to stay open, and it becoming incredibly difficult for many to manage their money. A giant financial storm that could affect how we all live and work. And as the cause of this economic crisis, well, we're not certain as these are simply unfounded predictions, not based on evidence or anything really tangible. But if some of the stuff coming up on this list really does play out, it won't be much of a surprise why money will be an issue for a large segment of the population. Now, on top of that, money would be the least of our problems. One possible cause of the global economic downfall could be related to the very next prediction on our list though. At our number eight spot, we have a global disease. The prediction here is that there will be a worldwide epidemic, similar to uh, that little thing we experienced back in 2020, only this time much, much worse. During these wonderful couple years where we were in and out of being locked away indoors and wearing masks everywhere we went, there was this idea floating around that maybe this whole thing was preparing us for something bigger, a pandemic that would be more deadly, more contagious, and spread around the world faster than anything we had ever experienced before. Whether this will be some intentional virus spread to enact you know, political control or something nature will throw at us, if this prediction does end up coming true and uh, we are met with some kind of terrifying super virus, I just really hope we're prepared. There's also a chance that Baba just uh, got our dates wrong and this global infectious disease already swept its way through the population in 2020 and uh, it's all mostly dealt with. It's also possible that her prediction is just completely bogus, so keep your pants on. Next up on the list we have the mysterious disease. Now this prediction directly affects 
the former president of the United States, Donald Trump. According to old Baba, Trump is going to contract a mysterious illness next year that will cause brain trauma and deafness. Uh, can't help but wonder if this will be the result of the same disease that we just discussed. Sounds pretty awful though. Not sure what the brain damage would entail, but losing your hearing, definitely something I would not wish on anyone. Number six, a strong dragon will take over the planet. Baba Vanga spoke of a formidable dragon that would rise to prominence and as cool as it would be for the earth to be ruled by a winged fire-breathing monster. Uh, she didn't mean dragon in the mythical sense. Instead, this quote-unquote dragon is a symbol of unity and power. This dragon, according to her visions, represents the coming together of Russia, India, and China, three major global players. And what she essentially foresaw was the significant geopolitical development where these nations would forge a closer alliance and cooperate, forming a powerful bloc. And while she didn't really delve into the specifics about what this alliance would entail, the implications are pretty clear. The emergence of a powerful force that could totally reshape the political landscape of the world as we know it. This change in power could also potentially lead to another prediction that's been hinted at for 2024, a potential third world war, I said. Not fun to think about. Next up, we have the rise of AI. Apparently in 2024, the use of AI is going to skyrocket, completely changing the world as we know it. Out of pretty much everything on this list, this is something I can totally see happening because it already is. AI is progressing at an alarming rate, learning faster than any living person ever could. It's getting to the point where scientists are actually kind of concerned about AI gaining some form of sentience. And if that happens, we're most likely totally screwed. Not because AI would necessarily be intentionally malevolent and want to destroy us, like uh, Skynet, although it totally could, but mainly because it could easily replace us. Human expression, talent, and skill could become a thing of the past. Like, just look how quickly AI has already affected some industries. Writers and actors are on strike. Animators and artists are fearing losing their jobs. I find AI really creepy, and I'm just hoping we're gonna find some way of integrating it in a way where it won't completely get out of control. At our number four spot, we have first contact with alien life. The Nostradamus of the Balkans predicted that extraterrestrials will finally make themselves known to us next year. Known to the public, anyway, if you're one of those folks who believes aliens are already amongst us. Introducing us uh, to incredible new technology and changing the world as we know it, of course. Now, this could actually be positive. If they turn out to be friendly, this would be awesome. One step closer to that Star Trek world I've always wanted to live in. But if they're not so friendly, yeah, you know. Actually though, gotta say, if there's one way I'd want the world to end, uh, it would be this. I think it'd be pretty cool. Going out battling aliens, be a much more awesome way for humanity to go extinct. Definitely beats the planet being destroyed by a giant meteor or something. That's just kind of boring. Far less heroic. Maybe being invaded by aliens would finally force humanity to come together for once, too. Realizing that we're not all that different, after all. Sucks we'd need an alien invasion for that to come to fruition, but it uh, is what it is, I guess. Next, we have a rise in natural disasters. Apparently, 2024 is going to be met with a number of crazy disasters, mostly due to climate change. Tsunamis, monsoons, hurricanes, tornadoes, you name it. These disasters are predicted to cause widespread destruction and death. One specific prophecy relates to a powerful tsunami that will apparently hit Asia next year, being the most deadly since 2004. As to exactly where in Asia, not certain. Neither is the prediction, though it's just that. It's a prediction. So for all the residents of Asia in the audience, don't panic yet. Take this with a grain of salt, a very heavy grain of salt. There's also predicted to be a major earthquake in the Pacific Rim. The shifting of tectonic plates in the Pacific Rim. We can have giant kaiju pop out of the ocean that we'll need to build giant sized mechs in order to battle against. That would be pretty expensive. Could lead to a global economic collapse. Yeah, you see the dots are starting to connect. And at number two, we have chaos in Europe. Yeah, apparently Europe is gonna go through a lot starting in 2024. You folks have some fun years ahead of you if Baba's predictions actually play out. Most of this relates to religious extremists 
unleashing more attacks on various parts of the continent, targeting both civilians and political leaders alike, one of whom is Vladimir Putin. Apparently someone from Russia is going to attempt to take him out. Uh, according to her, in the end, power will completely change hands in Europe. And it's not just that. Her predictions also stated that would be, there would be a complete collapse of Europe's economy. All this will supposedly lead to displacement of many Europeans, with the continent being sparsely populated by 2025. So, word to the wise, you may want to hold off on your European vacations for the next little while, because it looks like things are going to get pretty hairy. Finally, we have a rise in cyber attacks. Vanga's vision of 2024 paints a pretty bleak picture of the digital realm, essentially becoming a battlefield, with malicious hackers orchestrating cyber assaults on an unprecedented scale. These attacks will apparently extend far beyond conventional data breaches and phishing attempts. Instead, they'll come about as like the sophisticated and highly destructive attacks that could compromise critical infrastructure, financial systems, even the fabric of society itself. Vanga hinted that these cyber threats might have geopolitical implications, potentially altering the balance of power in the world as we know it today. There are some predictions that overlap here. As you could probably see, quantum computing could be a major factor with this increase in cyber attacks and the change of power on a global scale could be related to that strong dragon mentioned earlier. These cyber attacks could also partially be responsible for how messed up Europe is predicted to get. But I want to close this out with a bit of positivity. First of all, Although Baba Vaga has made a number of predictions that have come true, she's also made ones that haven't. And for all the dark stuff here that's said to play out, there's some good stuff too. Apparently we might get incredible medical breakthroughs for things like cancer. We may discover a new form of unlimited clean energy and uh, yeah, good things in the years following 2024. So there's always light at the end of the tunnel. The biblical flood is coming. It was said to be caused by seemingly endless torrents of rain so powerful that it literally left no mountain above the surface, submerging every single continent and turning the entire planet into one huge ocean. In the book of Genesis, this flood was sent out by God because the big man upstairs was so depleased with how the human race turned out that he decided to essentially annihilate everyone and everything, save for Noah, his family, and two of every species of animals. So if you ever dreamed of sailing or living out your best pirate life, then according to Nostradamus, the time has come this year. AJ's point leads me to another possible scenario. This biblical sized flood could send us into a water world scenario. And that would really be a nightmare. Out of all the cool movie worlds I'd want to live in, water world, very low on that list. I actually think it's kind of a cool movie, but it's not amazing or anything. And certainly not a world I'd want to live in. For one thing, I'd be seasick the entire time. I like a nice cruise on a boat, but uh, I could not do it 24-7. And in this situation, so much of humanity would have already perished. And now what's left of us would be floating around on makeshift rafts or stranded on top of skyscrapers, surrounded by water. And just like in Waterworld, there'd be rowdy bandits on jet skis pillaging and plundering their way across the sea. If you're enjoying the video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Next up, let's talk about how Nostradamus predicted that the sky is falling. Now, I'm not sure if this particular prophecy is meant to be taken literally or is some sort of metaphor or something like that, but in one of Nostradamus' passages, he describes how the moon, yes, the literal moon, will fall out of the sky, out of orbit, and collide with Earth. I have no idea how this could be interpreted, so I'm just gonna take it at face value here. Now, the moon is locked in orbit and wouldn't be able to collide with Earth on its own. It would need a ginormous force, like way bigger than anything we've ever seen, in order to shove the moon out of its orbit, like some kind of celestial event with absurd amounts of power. Now, coincidentally, NASA recently rediscovered a 54 million ton asteroid that will make its way past Earth in October of this year. Now, NASA has said that there's a 1 in 11.5 million chance of this asteroid colliding with Earth, so the odds of that happening are quite slim. But with that being said, if this asteroid misses the Earth and hits the moon instead, the impact of the moon smashing into Earth would be like the ultimate doomsday scenario. And like a cosmic game of dominoes would actually lead to a lot of his other predictions coming true. Picture an explosion so massive it 
makes the most enormous volcanic eruption seem like a tiny little The energy released would shake the planet to its core, causing seismic waves that would make earthquakes look like child's play. And the sky? Just forget about it. A cloud of debris would shoot up, blocking out the sun and plunging us into darkness. But wait! It gets worse! The aftermath would be a global nightmare. The Earth's crust would crack and heave, triggering mega tsunamis that would drown coastlines. And the sky-high dust would mess up our climate big time, leading to a deep freeze or a scorching heat wave, making it nearly impossible for life to survive on Earth. All right, I'm going to piggyback off AJ's point once again to discuss the aftermath of this falling sky scenario in greater detail. So one possible scenario, of course, is that the Earth experiences this massive heat wave with the land left completely scorched. It's hard to believe that anyone would survive all of that, but let's just say there were some stragglers. The last remnants of humanity aimlessly wandering through the wasteland in some sort of Mad Max scenario. Lips cracked, mouths dry, barely any water left in their bodies, dreaming of the days where their bottoms were damp with perspiration. Sounds like a real nightmare. But if they did manage to survive, to begin building a new society in the scorched desert sands coating the entire planet, who then would rise? Well, this would be the exact opposite of our water world scenario. Here, liquid would be the planet's greatest commodity. Roaming bands of mutated bandits would scour the sands, crushing anyone with precious water who stood in their path. Next up, let's talk about the Devourer of Worlds. Now, if you thought these predictions were absolutely insane, you haven't seen nothing yet. In part two of this series, James touched on how Nostradamus predicted that beings from other planets, yeah, that's right, aliens, would wage war against Earth. But apparently, these aliens are gonna be the least of our problems. You see, later on in that same passage, Nostradamus described a celestial being, not unlike God himself, who will come down upon the Earth and devour all that remains of our wrecked planet, literally consuming the entire freaking world. Now, it seems like these aliens are just the heralds of doom in this scenario. Maybe they were just attempting to warn us about this impending doom, but our simple monkey brains just start attacking, all the while a literal planet eater slowly but surely approaches Earth to consume it. And it won't just be Earth either. Apparently, this being is so massive that it will swallow up all of the planets in the entire solar system, including the sun itself itself, leaving behind a void of darkness as it carves its way through the Milky Way. Honestly, this sounds like where Stan Lee got his inspiration for the Marvel villain Galactus. Like, Nostradamus might have been onto something, right? Or maybe, just maybe, this is the cosmic force that's said to push the moon into Earth. How crazy would it be if Galactus himself was the first domino to kickstart the end of the world? Probably not, but... We're just gonna have to wait and see. And where will we end up if a Galactus-type entity consumes us? I mean, sure, we might just cease to exist or get crushed in some sort of dark void, but what if this Galactus situation is something more like the black hole we discussed in part three? What if we end up far out into the middle of space in some nightmarish realm uh, surrounded on all sides by aggressive alien fleets immediately demanding to know what we're doing in their solar system? Sure, the world wouldn't have ended, but we'd be in an entirely different kind of nightmare. Aliens start descending upon our planet, shoving their blasters in our faces, grilling us with questions through their advanced universal translators. What creatures are you? You invade our solar system? No, we've been transported here by a large unknown entity in a purple spacesuit. We've been trying desperately to return home. It's basically Star Trek. That's the world I want to live in, not, not Waterworld. Next up, let's talk zombies. In the previous part of the series, James mentioned how Nostradamus predicted a plague spread by birds, or as some of you in the comments like to describe them, government spies. Now, a few predictions later, Nostradamus goes on to explain how human beings will go insane with rage and devour one another. If we put two and two together here, we can surmise that that birds will be the one to pass this virus onto humans, which will have some sort of mad cow disease effect on human beings, leading to a literal zombie outbreak. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news recently, there's actually a bird flu going around right now that has been called a highly pathogenic avian influenza, which is wiping out bird populations and even other species of animals across the globe. Now, perhaps it's this virus that mutates into something much worse that causes this terrifying zombie scenario, or it could be 
something totally different, like the Last of Us type of fungus that drives humans mad. I mean, Nostradamus doesn't usually dive into the details, but in any case, mass human hysteria and eating one another really does not sound like a good time. All right, this horrifying idea of humans eating one another could also be interpreted in another way. What if it's not necessarily us literally eating each other, but the technology we've created eating us. Now, we've talked about AI being our downfall in this series, but what about VR specifically? I tried VR for the first time a couple months back, and I gotta say, if I had it in my home, I'd be on there far more than I'd like to admit. It is pretty cool, and you know the technology is only going to improve. A VR game so advanced, so immersive, could draw us in so deeply that the lines between reality and fiction begin to blur, or maybe we just no longer care about the real world because we can throw on a pair of goggles and live in a world where we fly around on Falcor from the never ending story shooting at Klingons with Robocop's Auto 9 pistol. Like, hmm, should I spend my day doing that? Or should I go to my cousin's funeral? I only met her like once, I barely even knew her. I don't think the family would care. You know what, I have a date with Lara Croft at three. I'd better just stay right where I am. You could see from my incredibly realistic scenario that VR may become so easy to get lost in that our minds literally become consumed by it. Next, let's talk Planet of the Apes. So Nostradamus' predictions actually extend beyond the tragic and apparently horrifically violent end of humanity. According to the Prophet of Doom, when it's all said and done, humanity will have successors that will dominate what remains of Earth long after we're gone. But it won't be reptilian lizard people. Thank God. Actually, our successors will be a lot closer to us on the evolutionary tree. Apes. Yeah, that's right. It seems like Pierre Boulle took a page out of the Nostradamus Doomsday playbook. If you've seen any of the Planet of the Apes movies or read the book, you'll know that these hyper-intelligent primates can be basically just as cruel as humans. So it seems like even in the event when all of us are wiped out, there will always be monkeys running the Earth. You know, on second thought, Maybe we should give the reptiles a try. All right, maybe our successors won't be reptilians or apes at all, though. Maybe the future is fish. We mentioned a massive size flood at the very start of this list, followed by a water world scenario. Well, it's very logical to assume, then, that if this is the direction Earth went, the creatures of the sea would become more abundant and possibly even evolve into a new form of intelligent life. Or perhaps the remnants of humanity would evolve to become more fish-like, like take Kevin Cosner in Waterworld. He had gills and he could breathe underwater. He was a fish mutant. It happened in that movie, so it's gotta be true. If you enjoyed these end of the world predictions, then you have to check out this video next. It's about real places on Earth that look like they're straight out of your nightmares. Click the video now to find out more.